Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm going to show you guys how to do some clay related, pinch pot related techniques today. We're going to learn to wedge, do pinch pot, and we're going to take a look at creating texture. Let's begin. First thing I want to show you how to do is wedge. So right here I have a bench hook uh, that I'm using. Uh, I use these in my classroom because my tables are so horrible for ceramics. So you take this little hook right here and you can ram it up to the table and it will keep uh, this from sliding all over the place while we wedge our clay. So step one, we're going to have to cut our clay. So here's our clay and I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to slice this. Uh, it looks like some crazy bandits have been in here. Some hooligans have been messing with my clay. It's probably just the way it got thrown around during the move. So I've got uh, right here, I've got a wire to cut this clay with. I have a really nice wire, um, has a handle. It's very nice. You guys can invest in things like that. But I want to show you guys how to do this with the tools available in the classroom. So this is something we have access to. One thing you want to be careful with, don't crimp the wire. So you want to be gentle with it when you're unwinding it. Another thing I would say is I'd like to take and wrap this around my hand a couple times. Made a little shorter, okay? For slicing uh, smaller blocks of clay like this. So I've got one that like, you, it's, it's adjustable, it has a handle, and you cut off slabs the, the thickness you want. Uh, but this is what we're going to be using in class. This is what you have access to. So that's what we're going to use. And so a lot of people cut off the top of their clay like this, but what we're going to do, we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to show you guys um, a way that was shown to me. If you turn this upside down, then the clay sticks to the table. So if you cut off the top, when, you're, when your block of clay is taller, it wants to dump the block over. So if we cut off the bottom like this with it upside down, then the weight of the clay, you know, we're not high centered then. So I can actually pull through like that. Nothing to it. We'll just want to make sure that we clean our wire off when we're done. Don't allow it to dry like that. And now we have a nice little slab of clay, which I'm going to go ahead and destroy now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wedge this now. So I'm just going to put this into some kind of manageable ball. And then I'm going to start wedging it, okay? So the first step is to actually grab this clay and make sure that your hands are, are able to cover the top. So that's one of the big mistakes that many people make when they're wedging their clay. Uh, we wedge our clay to keep it from getting uh, air pockets and, and anomalies in it and to make sure it's all uniformed. And so we're going to go ahead and wedge it, but we want to make sure that we're doing it right. So we want our hands to be on top. We want to make sure we get good coverage up there, but we also want to make sure our hands are on the side. So that's one of the most important things. And I like to stand up when I'm doing this so I can use my body weight. It makes it a lot easier. And so uh, I'll show you some, I'll show you how to do this and I'll show you some common mistakes. So you guys can see kind of what my hands are doing around the clay. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to push this forward and down. And then I end up with something that looks a lot like this. All right? And then I take this and I roll it back on itself. Hands on the sides. I got some pressure on top, but I got really, I'm, I'm keeping this thing from growing by keeping my hands on the sides, okay? Down and forward, roll it back to me. Down and forward, roll it back to me. Down and forward, roll it back. Down and forward, roll it back. And there's really nothing, uh, there's really nothing as nice as having a good ceramics table to work on, but we don't, and we probably never will, so it is what it is. Down and forward. Roll it back, down and forward, roll it back. You see when I roll it back, my, my bench hook slides a little, but it is what it is. Down and forward, roll it back, down and forward, roll it back, down and forward, roll it back. It's a lot more of an even motion when you don't have to worry about the bench hook, but like I said, if you don't, the bench hook keeps this from sticking to the table and making a complete horrible mess. 
when you're wedging this right, what you end up with is what we call an alien head, right? So I'll show you. I'll wedge this a few more times. Show you what we got here. All right. So now we got our alien head. We got our, our lips right here. However you want to see those, you got the eyes on the side. Okay. I usually just do it a few times and I turn it over, wedge it a few more on the other side. When your board starts to get too damp, you can move it to keep the clay from sticking. So you do that on any surface that you're, that you're wedging on. You don't want to overdo it though. So you overdo it, your clay will dry out. Once again, we got our alien head. We got our lips right here. We got our eyes on the side. So he's a strange looking fellow, but now we're wedged. We're ready to pat this into a ball, into a shape that we can work with. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you're making a very round geometric bowl, this may not even be the style for you, but if you are, the rounder the, that you get it, the more spherical you get it, the easier it's gonna be later on, but it doesn't really, it isn't really that crucial. It's all in how you hold your hands later. Now, the one thing I will say about wedging is when we're wedging, one of the big mistakes that people make is when they push down and forward. When they go forward, they move their hands like this. Don't do that. Keep your hands in that same position like I did. Okay? Do not go, do not move your hands out of the way. When your hands bottom out on the board, that's what it is. They bottom out on the board. Just deal with it, right? So. They'll just rub against the board. Uh, don't try to move your hands out of the way because when you do that, that's when you start to get this thing. You move your hands out from the sides of the clay and the clay begins to grow and grow and grow and grow out sideways. And you don't want that. So that's probably the most common mistake when wedging. And then uh, I'm gonna show you the pinch pot technique from here. And then I'll show you the most common mistake with the pinch pot technique. So now that we got uh, roughly a spherical shape here, what I want to do is pick my where I want the top of my pot to be. So I'm going to say it really doesn't matter extremely. I'm just kind of looking to see if I've already got some kind of odd anomaly, like some kind of wrinkle or something like that that I can get rid of. It's not too bad. So what I want to do is I want to take my thumb and I'm going to push it down into the pot. Okay, sound effects are important. Okay, this is serious business. All right, and what I want to do is I want to stop my thumb from going out around, you know, this thick toward the bottom, right? So I don't want to go any further than that. And so what I want to do, if I want to make a round pot like I'm going to make for you today, a rounded pot, I'm going to keep my hand round, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm smashing my thumb into the clay, and that's mashing the clay into the shape of my hand. My hand is behaving like a mold. And my thumb is acting like a, uh, it's acting like some kind of piston pushing that clay into the mold, right? So if I want a flatter pot, I can hold my hand flat, okay? And that'll mash it into a flat shape. If I want it to be angled, I can angle it. If I want it to be angled out, I can angle it this way. Uh, you know, basically, whatever I want to do, whatever shape I want this to be, I need to hold my hand and maintain that shape, okay? Now, one of the most important things is that we start at the bottom and work our way up to the top. So right now, I'm just going around this bottom layer. After I'm done with that, I'll go around the second layer. And then I'll go around this higher middle layer. And then finally, I'll go around the outside, the top. But the reason we have to do it in this order is because this thing grows as you are mashing this into shape. Once again, all I'm doing is just kind of pinching this into my hand, working around the, the very bottom portion first, then I'll go to the middle. Once this gets thin enough. Uh, I say pinch it, pinch it into, uh, you know, small amounts. Don't try to mash it all at once. Do it a little bit at a time. You see, if you mash it too hard, you start to get these ridges. But eventually they will work out as long as you don't keep making that same mistake. 
I personally don't uh, care if this comes out a little expressive. I actually kind of like that. I want this to kind of be uh, odd and I want it to be expressive. I want it to show the way I moved. Maybe not so much as it's going right now. When your thumb gets tired, just switch hands. Do not start doing this kind of motion or like this. Okay, this is one of the most common mistakes with making the pinch pot. What happens, you end up with a really thick base that's too thick to fire, and, you, and, the, and the walls of the pot get thinner and thinner as they go out until they eventually start tearing around the edges. If you, if you start trying to make your pot like this, I will know just by looking at it what you did. I'll be able to tell you. Okay, so now I'm moving up a little toward the middle. I'm still kind of at the bottom, but the, where I started, that, that layer is thin enough. Now I'm going around the middle. Okay, let me turn it so you can kind of see a little better. And when my hand tires out, I'll switch hands again. So main thing, we just want to keep the same method. We don't want to change methods in the middle. And this is starting to get a little thinner. Let me switch hands here and I'll go up a little higher. Now I'm kind of pinching around in this area. But I want this to be very consistent. You want your pots to be consistent, okay? We can make these a little thicker because they're going to be expressive. Uh, when we can do raku, they're going to be raku. And so the thickness may not hurt, but you don't want this thing to be so heavy that you can't actually use it for anything. So these are gonna be real when we're done. Now, if I want this thing to be really rounded at the top, I can really curve up here and I can make sure this thing uh, stays that way. But as you see, I've relaxed my hand a little because I want this to come, I want it to come open up a little bit as it goes up to the top. And we want it to be consistent. Okay, so whenever there's an air pocket in there, we have to wedge because if there's an air pocket, then whenever we put it in the kiln, the air is going to expand at a different rate than the clay. When things get hot, they expand. Okay, and then what's going to happen is this thing's going to pop and blow up. But if I make it different thicknesses, that means there's going to be moisture different amounts of moisture in here possibly. If I get it too thick, what's going to happen is there's going to be some moisture build up. And if I don't let it draw all the way, I'll show you different techniques to make sure that your pots are dry before you put them in the kiln. But if, if there's, you know, these inconsistencies, number one, it looks bad. Number two, if, if you get it too thick in one spot and there's water in there where the rest of the pot's dry and you didn't catch it, then the water will expand at a different rate than the clay and the clay will explode. And when I say it'll explode, I mean it'll blow up like a grenade, okay? I've had students who've made that mistake before. It'll blow up, destroy your work, destroy everyone else's work as well. Okay, so this is the, the piece that I've got right now. Now I just wanna show you one more thing real quick. Uh, I'm gonna show you what you can do if this thing is not the shape you want. So I've got a very traditional kind of bowl shape here. Whatever way I push it, that's the way it's gonna dry. So if I want it to be very, very geometric, then number one, pinch pot might not be the technique for you. But if you do want it to be very geometric, you're gonna have to shape it that way before it dries, okay? Now one other thing I'll note, I did this on purpose so you guys can see it. You always wanna work with a bowl of water. You see how I'm starting to get little cracks and stuff up at the top, starting to get a little dried out? I'll show you what causes that and how to fix it. All right, so now we're ready to make some alterations here. Get this thing kind of the way I want it. All right, so what's happening here is we're starting to get some cracks, but I can smooth it out just by dipping my finger in water. I can make this really smooth. I can make it just like I want it. I can kind of change the shape and alter it. You see, I'm making it kind of more geometric now. Starting to get that kind of hard edge. That's not exactly what I'm going for here. But one thing I will show you, the reason that it's starting to crack or, or get dry in places, it is getting dry, that's why it's starting to crack. Uh, and so what I wanna do, if, if that's happening, every so often, I wanna just dip my fingertips in water 
and then I'm gonna rub them together just like I'm washing my hands, okay? And that'll keep your hands hydrated. You don't want your hands uh, soaking wet, dripping wet, because what you'll do is you'll make a sloppy mess out of your clay, but you do want them to be hydrated because your clay is drawing moisture out of your hands. And uh, and what's happening is your hands drawing moisture out of the clay, your clay just wants to dry, draw moisture out of your hands, and vice versa. And so the clay is gonna get dried out, so is your hands. So what you wanna do, you wanna go ahead and keep them hydrated by dipping them every so often, if your hands get dry, and just rub them together like you're washing them and that'll kind of soak the water, evenly distribute it. And I found that's what works really good for me. You can also use more water to do different things. So if I want the, the bottom of this to be smooth, I can actually kind of smoothen it out. Just a little water. Now on to the next phase. Uh, I'm not too worried about this. I want this to stay very organic and I'm even going to alter it from here. So I'm going to show you the next step in this creation. Okay, so I'm going to show you what we can do to start creating some texture. I've just got some random items here and I'm going to start exploring texture with them. So one thing I can do, so I can come around the side here and I can start using these to create texture. I can also use the back end. So I'm just, these are just some objects that are near me that I'm gonna try. All right, so if I see something that I like, I can use it to create a texture, okay? I just wanna kinda be kinda random with it. And kinda consistent at the same time, so. Another thing I can do here, I could use an Allen wrench maybe, so we can kind of play off some of these. And I can be less uniform than this if I want, so if I wanted to, I could just take this thing and go really crazy with it. Alright, so that's something I could do. Um, another thing, you know, here's a pencil sharpener, I don't know, I'm going to try it. Who knows? I might find an interesting way to do this. Oh, look at that. So that's kind of an interesting texture. Okay. All right. Uh, now, normally I would wait till the end to do my texture or closer to the end, but I want to do this in a certain order just to kind of show you. Let's fix our little cracks here that are forming. Well, I bungled it. I recorded making the pot for the demo and I accidentally had the pot out of view when I was teaching you guys how to slip and score so I threw another real uh, pot really quick here in the same kind of technique very expressive I wanted my fingerprints to show uh, this right here is my needle tool so I'm gonna use that for my slip and score demo so what I'm gonna do is change the shape of this pot say I messed up uh, and I or I changed my mind and now I want to make this pot a little different. Once again, very expressive. So what I wanna do, say I want it to be taller and thinner instead of kinda of sprawled out like a regular bowl. This would be great for eating, uh, this would be great for eating cereal in, right? All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and change it though, for the demo's purposes. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna cut out this little pizza slice, okay? And then I'm going to slip and score this together okay so what I'm gonna do I'm going to score it on one side that means to scratch so I'm just gonna scratch it up really good over here on one side okay so now that I've got that good and scratched up now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to scratch the uh, the opposing side here on the opposite side. You see I scratched this one on the outside, I'm scratching this one on the inside. Well there's a reason for that. And that way I can push them together. So what I'm going to do, uh, instead of using slip, I've got slip here. I can pour in some slip. It's a liquid clay solution, but I do that in other places, so in other demos, so I won't use it right now. I'm just going to use water to show you that that is a possibility. For those of you working from home, um, 
You can make slip by smashing your clay up into water. But if you need to do this in a pinch, you don't actually have to use slip. So now that I've slipped, uh, now that I've scored both sides together, now that I've scored both sides, I can actually mash them together, and that's why I did them on opposing sides, so I could mash those pieces together and they wouldn't try to fight me. If you if you score it on the insides and then try to push these together, it, it it's gonna fight you a little. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to drag my nail across this and show you how to do this without tools. Once again, if you're doing this from home, you can invest in all the cool tools that you want, um, but you don't have to. You can do this with your fingers. Just make sure you trim your nails, because if you don't trim your nails, you're going to have trouble. You can use the backs of your nails to kind of smooth these little spots out and blend them together. Let me see if I can turn this over here so you can see this side while I work on it. And as you can see, when I'm done, you will never be able to tell that that was sliced. Especially if I come back and put my fingerprints back in it and kind of put that same texture on there that I had before. And voila! Okay, and now look at the bowl. It's so much different. Now it is more upright, vertical. It's deeper, less shallow. Uh, you, you know, I'm not saying this is better. I'm just saying if you decide to change your bowl, you can. That is a possibility. You also use this technique to add things on. Okay, so let's say I wanted handles on my bowl. Uh, you know, you can do that with this technique. So I'm, once again, I'm going to slice some handles off with my needle tool. This is going to be like the world's biggest coffee cup. This is the kind of coffee cup I need on Mondays. So once again, I'm going to scratch it up. That's called scoring. We'll talk a little bit about the etymology of that word in class. And then I also want to score where I'm attaching it. So let's kind of mock it up here and see where it's going to fit. You see how this is very expressive. I want it to be that way, okay? You can refine these and make these as smooth and nice and pretty as you want. So I can take and measure this out, see what it's going to look like. I like that, I think. I'll mark it out. That way I don't score too much. Ooh. All right, so the sound effects are very important. Okay, now this time I will use a little slip just for fun, just for funsies. All right. And I'll take my needle tool and kind of use that to smooth this out. There are plenty of tools you can use to, to do this. They make some really nice silicone tools. Maybe I'll put those in a demo. Uh, later on I have some. Show you if you want to invest in those. You can actually get them pretty cheap on Amazon. Helps you get into those hard to reach places and smooth these, these little surfaces out. Really wonderful little modeling tools. All right, so I think that's one handle. Do we want another one? Why not? Let's see if we're about the same size. Another thing I could have done, if I wanted to be very precise, I could have cut out the first one, laid it over on my slab, cut out, used it to trace with my needle tool, just like if I was tracing with a pencil. All right, well, this is pretty close. I'm, I'm pretty well good here, so I think We'll put our wobbly handle over here on this side. I'm gonna try, it looks like it's all the way at the bottom and then about, a, about this far from the top. Let's make sure they're straight. Okay. 
Okay. All right, we can use a modeling tool to drag across this or the back of our fingernails or even the needle tool if we get desperate. So if you can only afford one tool, you can do that. Um, but I will give you a demo on how to use the modeling tools later, but it, it just kind of makes it seamless and that's what you like. We want it to kind of look like it flows from the pot, it belongs to the pot, it's not some ad hoc thing, it was always part of the design, right? Even though it was ad hoc and I just came up with the idea to put handles on it just a few seconds ago. And this is like one very ugly bowl. But you know, who knows, I might be able to do something with it to kind of spruce it up. Uh, I like the organic look, but with the handles added, uh, I'm not a big fan of the organic look with the handles in this particular instance. I'm sure I could have done it a different way and I would like it better. But one thing you gotta realize, um, you know, I always have the opportunity to change this any kind of way I want to. So I can do all kinds of fun things with this. Or I can just throw it away. Restart over, right? Just wedge it back up into a ball and begin again. Very useless pot. <laughs> We got a tear right there. All right, well, that's how you slip and score. The slip is the water clay solution. Mine was a little runny today. I just mixed it up. I think I need to add a little more clay to it. And the score is to scratch. Hiya! <laughs> So right now we're at the, the wet stage, and so this thing is exceedingly wet. So I want to show you maybe another little trick here to the trade. So something else I can do, I can use other things to kind of make these things hold their form while they're, while they're wet, okay? So if I want this to kind of be more of this kind of shape, I can come in here, put it in the shape I want, and make sure that gravity is not harming me, right? I'm going to go ahead and say this needs to go something like that. That's a little more centered. Get it where I want it, and then I can leave it. Okay. I also want to use my hand maybe for backup on this. Maybe I'll continue my eclectic little texture thing here. I'll make a combination of textures maybe. I don't know. We'll see. It's probably just going to be a big mess. I'm going to pick some more places to do my other textures at. This is going to be very heavily textured, right? This thing might even look like a nightmare. And we can't forget about our pencil sharpener. Now, I would select, you know, less textures, but since I've done them all, for the demo, I'm just going to do them all. Finish it up. Who knows? Who knows what kind of Frankenstein monster we're going to be creating here. Okay, so now we've got a heavily, heavily textured form here. All right. So we'll see how that turns out. Uh, I'll just mess around with the shape a little bit. Maybe not, uh, maybe not too much on this video, but... I'll mess around with the shape a little bit before it dries. And then we'll see what it, it looks like later. So I might want to make this into a flower pot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and 
make sure we have a little hole here. Okay. And then maybe narrow it just a little so that all there are soil doesn't fall out. And we can keep it very organic still if we want to, just to match the rest of the pot. All right. So now we've seen how to slip and score, how to wedge, how to uh, create a pinch pot, how to create texture. And you can do this with just about anything. That you have lying around so we maybe I don't really care about a texture on the bottom but just to show you I found an ink pen here this might make something cool um, the bottoms different than the top it's not really registering too much um, you can get a really light texture from this sandpaper so anything you have laying around typically you can use to create texture so try out a bunch of different things just see what you have and uh, Think about what might look good on your pot. All right. Until next time. All right, here we are the next morning. I've put my piece in a bag so that uh, it would dry out a little, but not all the way. So uh, I didn't cover it too tightly, and the bag actually has a hole in it. And so that's something you might want to experiment with. It's going to be harder to, to do things like this in class because you're going to have all of these uh, days where you're not going to be here. There you are. We're going to be very careful in removing our thing here not to tear a hole. All right. So now that it's a little more firm, you see it stands up on its own now. The other day it didn't. Now I can kind of patch some of these uh, things that messed up and I can more shape this thing the way I want it So now I have a little more control over it. So allowing it to dry the right amount is going to be something that's crucial Now I have a little place right here where I've scored I have scratched it up really good There was some damage on there that I've got to repair I'm gonna go ahead and score this side up really good, too Now I'm going to add a little slip. So this time we've got some slip today that I've mixed up. And the slip is just a water and clay solution. So that's going to kind of really bind this together. Make sure there's no air bubbles. One thing I'll point out real quick. If you see what I'm doing right here. You can use a tool or your fingernail to kind of drag it backwards across there and kind of join these pieces together. And then it's hard to, if you do it right, there'll be no way to tell that there was ever two pieces of clay there. It'll all look like just one piece. All right. This is the tool you would use right here. This is a wooden modeling tool. You see you got different ends for manipulating clay in different ways. What I recommend is taking, you see it's got like a spoon here, it's it's concave right here, it's convex right on this side. So what I recommend, so you can use it the same way that I use my fingernail. You can kind of rake it across there. And you see how it kind of makes that division go away? Where it's all one nice smooth piece now. So that's what you can do with your uh, modeling tools. You can do a number of things with these, but these are one of the most valuable tools that you can get for manipulating clay.
Now I can just cover this back up. Now we'll be ready to let it dry out a little more. When I come back, it'll be a little harder, it'll be in a leather hard stage, and then I can do even more with it. And I'll show you some new techniques.